get my nuggets. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to Family Jewels. <laughs> Caught him a little off guard here. So uh, he had to grab a couple of things here out of his desk. But uh, anyway, welcome to Family Jewels. And uh, my name's Colton Bartell. And I'm Audie Bartell. We are both graduate gemologists here at Suzanne's Custom Jewelers. And uh, I just want to thank you for joining us today. Um, this morning we're talking about one that I actually don't know a whole heck of a lot about. Um, mainly because I don't see it a lot. Right. And it's not something that we really discussed a lot in school. Right. So really there wasn't any reason to know a whole lot about it <laughs> until recently. So um, he's going to be doing most of the talking today. I'm just going to sip on coffee. And listen to him. Okay, so <laughs> what kind of brought this about, and, and I just called the customer a little bit ago to find out if we could do this, is we had a customer that brought in... Um, I guess I'll say a fairly rare gem. Uh, it's a little bit unusual because it's not uh, it's not faceted, um, and it's not one one thing, I guess, or whatever. Uh, and a little bit of mystery, and I don't know if Colton listed this on facebook before nope. we did it or whatever nope it's a complete mystery to him this morning is it it is <laughs> so then well have... other than the title oh do you well yeah we title it so uh, that they can go back and search it later. Uh, okay so if they read the title then they know what we're talking about and, and they just don't know what we're talking about okay so <laughs> in the grand scheme of things we're going to talk about gold and in the little scheme of things, we're going to talk about something that is extremely rare in gold, and that's gold in quartz. And it's just like Colton asked, you know, is that gold and quartz or gold in quartz? And what it or is? Golden or golden quartz. Or golden quartz. So a, a little bit unusual because there's not a lot of this produced anymore, and it's almost like, you know, this would have been like, they would have found this in like hard rock mining. Uh, and just to kind of give you an idea, just in nugget form, uh, only about 2% of the world's gold has been discovered as a nugget. So for the most part, it's like gold dust or, you know. Gold in the in ore. Right. That they have to Which basically. A lot of these mines that are out. maybe really rich in gold ore, you can't even see the gold. Yeah. So. <laughs> How did they figure that out, though? Well, like, well, let's heat this rock up and see if any metal comes out. And well, we'll just... I don't know if that's quite the way they did it or whatever. You know, to just you know, originally the it's kind of like oil. The original stuff was what was found easily. So it's found, yeah. found on the surface, you know, like what started the California gold rush was big nugget found in whatever river that was. I forget which one it is, but know. anyways, but that's kind of what started. But anyways, um, I've kind of known about this stuff for a while and I didn't realize how rare it was because I thought maybe what I wanted to do is I wanted to make a, a, a man's basically chain necklace out of golden cords. And so I had a guy that we had bought other stuff from and he happened to have a piece of golden cords from California, which um, I my understanding is that uh, a lot of that is old stuff mm. maybe well maybe a hundred years old now or something like that yeah but some of the families or some of the people in that area where it was originally found still have some and he um, had a he had a chunk that was probably about oh maybe a little over an inch long and probably a quarter quarter to maybe three inches kind of like a little ingot thing of golden quartz and to give you an idea of what we're talking about and I'm kind of jumping around just a little bit or whatever but um, this yeah, he's really jumpy <laughs> <laughs> this is a this is a ring I try to get this where you could see it maybe against something that's 
But if you look at it, you know, part of this is the ring, and then part of it, the white you see, is basically quartz. And then there's going to be gold vein like things in there, and that's actually almost pure gold that's in that quartz. Yeah. And this occurs naturally that way. Uh, extremely rare and to give you an idea like um, I've got some gold nuggets which are not very big and we've had bigger ones up to I think the largest that we've ever had was like an ounce get these out I don't know how I'm gonna hold those up <laughs> you should have left them in the little well, bottle. I, I guess I could leave you can hold one up at a time I guess if you want and I just hold one so you get an idea so and I, these aren't overly big as you can see but give you an idea about two percent of the world's gold has been found in nugget form so you know it's not very much no nope. uh, the other thing is to give you an idea of how rare gold is if you have a billion atoms there's going to be one of those billion that's, that's a charles that's a that's a gold <laughs> that's a gold atom and to give it a little perspective there that's basically the a little, there's over 32 years if you went uh a, a, okay a second. if the if the gold was equivalent to seconds right it would be one second in 32 years right yeah that's pretty rare yeah and then it's pretty fleeting and then to get an idea <laughs> that you know you've got a nugget yeah, the, and only 2% of that is, is nugget as, form. Right. So, and, yeah. And then my understanding is, and, and I could be wrong, I probably need to do a little more research on this, but whenever I had this wild idea of making this uh, necklace or whatever, is the only thing I could find that was producing uh, gold and quartz was the it's and i don't even know if i saw say it right jimpy yeah. and it's a mining area in australia g-y-m-p-i-e and i saw a lot of that but uh i'm i'm gonna say there's not gonna be many of them that was probably gonna do what i wanted to do was make gold beads or make beads out of that jimpy it sounds like a knockoff sub shop <laughs> we're just gonna use sliced bread and yeah. throw some bologna on there yeah yeah welcome to jimpy jimpy <laughs> well you know australia comes up with some different names anyway so you know you're gonna go in that's the true back you know or whatever but anyway so we showed you a ring do you show them the i haven't uh, touched any of it you haven't so touched any of whatever it. Oh, you, you gave the nuggets whatever you show so there is basically a whale's tail uh, and still the so glad we had to describe that <laughs> gold, well it's a little bit it could be like an airplane or or a moth well I'm just kind of going it's kind of like a cloud thing but uh, we also got there's some that's used in earrings most of this stuff is cabochon form it's not faceted but this is actually the way it came out of the ground almost you know there's a little bit of, came out cabochon yeah well except that they <laughs> they made it a cabochon it came out sitting in your ring yeah <laughs> that's <laughs> really rare that is rare <laughs> but uh this you know like like colton said i don't remember us going over this when i rise at gia it, you know it was something that whenever i was going going through all the gems and stuff and we're talking about quartzes and uh you know we spent most of the time on citrine and amethyst and smoky quartz and rock crystal quartz and then it was like oh by the way gold can you know gold veining can appear in quartz and we just call it golden quartz and so next week we're going to be talking about you know and then it just kind of that was went it. over what, it you know sentence, i think right? i think we saw maybe one piece here and there um as we had you know in class we would have stuff come through from donors or from um basically exhibits that were passing through uh -huh. um because they have like a little museum area upstairs there at gia and so we'd have traveling 
basically traveling um, exhibits. Right. And I, you know, there were some of them that were smaller where basically it came in and it would just go class to class and mm -hmm. they would show it. Because um, one of those was actually um, a collection of barrels, including Red Barrel. Mm -hmm. And uh, they had a lot of that. That probably didn't go class to class, did it? Yeah, it did. It did? Yeah, that went class wow. to class. They didn't actually put that on display. It was actually so safer they let for you them. Touch the red bear. Yeah, it was safer for them actually to go class to class. I guess I don't. I don't really know. Or they had more restricted time with it. I guess. Because mm. other than that, normally they like built these elaborate displays and stuff for everything. I know we had a huge tanzanite display that came through mm -hmm. that took the entire upstairs, and I mean it had like shoes, like stiletto shoes that were diamond and tanzanite and stuff like that, and then. You know, we would have smaller, smaller little exhibits that would come through, and I think this was in one of them, and it was basically kind of uh, like rare opaque stones mm -hmm. is pretty much what it was. Um, but that was pretty much the only time we ever saw any of it. I'm going to say that's more than what I saw. Um, I really didn't see it or hear about it until. Well, I actually saw um, at Tucson, which would have been back in the 80s, I guess, uh, this Jimpy. Now, I'm still not sure I'm saying that right. But, and I think the <laughs> the guys were probably from Australia, but everything that they had was golden quartz. Mm. And, I, you know, I knew that, and, and what's kind of a little bit weird is I can remember one uh, vacation that we took back when I was younger or whatever, and we went to kind of that Red River, New Mexico area, I think. And they were actually working on a highway, hmm. and we got stopped because they were loading a truck or something like that. And so we were out there, because they'd stopped us for a while, and uh, we were out there looking around, and we actually found a piece, and I don't know whatever happened to it, but a piece of quartz with gold in it. Mm. Um, and it was probably you know, maybe I'm kind of maybe a half inch long, maybe at the most. This would have been what late sixties, seventies. I would say maybe not last week. So don't everybody go rush to I'm, I'm Red gonna, River, New I'm Mexico. Say the sixties, but the Red River is fun. Um, but I, I still remember finding that and. And we probably didn't realize, you know, how rare that was, but right. to find a piece, and, and they'd been, I'm going to say they'd been blasting there, you know, I don't remember now exactly Those what they did, because I wasn't, I wasn't very old, I'm going to say I was maybe five or six, kind of guessing, so. So that would have been maybe late 50s. Maybe late 50s, yeah, yeah. I hate to say this, but I kind of remember the car. <laughs> it was a red Studebaker. Uh, but it was anyway. probably the 50s. Yeah, probably in the 50s. Yeah. But I, I guess what a lot of people don't really understand because you walk into a jewelry store and they just got cases are just loaded with gold and stuff. But to, to really realize how rare gold actually is. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing is, too... You know, and most people don't consider this is when you are looking in the cases of that gold jewelry, you're actually looking at alloys. So right. to, to kind of give you an example with uh, 14 karat gold, it's basically just over 50% actually is gold. The remaining part of that is actually other metals, other metals usually being uh, copper, zinc, silver, stuff like that um and even in 10 karat you know you're not quite 42 percent gold so really you know if you were to go in and basically melt everything down that's in most stores only half of what's in those cases is actually gold so i guess you could say that even in a jewelry store gold is rare yeah so and another thing that i kind of I did a little look in here. The total estimated amount of gold extracted from the earth is approximately 175,000 metric tons. Wow. 
So if they put it all into one spot, and I always heard a swimming pool thing or whatever, <clears throat> but the, <clears throat> these people have on there that uh, the cube, if they put it into a cube, would measure 20 by 20 meters. So, so that's 60 feet by 60 feet, a little over, over, little over roughly. Yeah. So, and I was talking to Carla a little bit, you know, what, they're, what they do is, you know, uh, gold is 19.3 times denser than what water is. And you see in these movies where they're picking up these gold bricks or they've got like 10 of them in a bag and they're carrying it around. All right, no way. <laughs> no. No way. They got a little deal here that... Uh, uh, what was that? 14, where was that at? A 14.2 inch cube of gold weighs, weighs one, one ton. ton. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so granted, you can So get... you got a cube that's basically about that big and you'd need, you'd need a heavy duty forklift just to lift it. Yeah. So, wow. you know, they, they fill one of those backpacks with gold bars. That's got to be a real horse to move that. What's even crazier, so they got on here too, that uh, gold is one of the densest elements there is on Earth. There's only six known that, metals on Earth that are more dense than gold. Right. Um, those are plutonium, platinum, iridium, neptunium, osmium, and rhenium. I haven't even heard rhenium. Do you know, I think that's ruthenium instead of rhenium? I don't know. I've never heard of rhenium. Wow, that's that's still kind of amazing. The other thing that was kind of interesting is that 90% of the above ground gold has been mined since the California gold rush. Wow. Well, that's pretty amazing. The other thing that's I've heard originally and maybe not you know, I need to go into history here a little bit cuz I don't know when when the golden quartz was found in Australia. It could have superseded this, but there's a really famous mine that I know produced golden quartz, and that was called the 16 to 1 mine. Mm. And I I think you can actually take tours of that mine, but I don't think they're producing any golden quartz that I know of. The golden quartz I saw was from California, but my understanding was that it was bought from a family that had had it for a while and was mm. in the area where that was being mined at. Uh, I wished I would have bought that now. I mean, I knew that it was rare, but I had no idea how rare. But, you know, it's a little bit unusual. We had a customer bring some pieces in and they would, they allowed us to show them, which was really nice because there's really not a whole lot of people that see it or even know about it. Um, and we don't even see it that often. No, no. And like whenever I was in Tucson, I can only remember one one vendor there that actually had golden quartz. Mm. And, you know, we keep talking about Tucson, just to give you an idea, Tucson is the largest gem and mineral show in the world. Yeah, and what's crazier is, I mean, I've been one time, and I know they've kind of changed some of the rules and stuff since then, at least the city has, but whenever, whenever I'd gone, uh, I mean, it was just, I knew it was going to be huge, but it was just overwhelming. I mean, you're literally, you can drive down the highway and there was guys set up with tents at overpasses. You'd go to hotels and they would just have, you know, you have the little door in between rooms. They just had all of them open and like every room was a different booth. And so those guys would have to not only open that up, but that's where they were staying yeah. For the week that they were there. Yeah. They're staying in their, they're basically sleeping in their booth. Yeah. Um, uh, because they didn't have any else anywhere else to go. I mean, they were setting up tents and fields and stuff just to to host this stuff. Um I mean it was Yeah, it, it was I, literally that I mean, there were some where it was like they had cut cans, tin cans and rolled the edges and dumped stones in that to pick from because it was just like they needed they needed something to hold all the stuff, and it was like they just ran yeah, they, out of room. And, and, and there's there are <clears throat> other parts of the show that are much more refined and yeah, 
Yeah. But yeah, it's like all the, the way. A, the AGTA show or the American Gym Trade Association. It, it's all the way from almost like a little kid walking around with a coat and it's got a whole bunch of pockets in it to. Uh, High security. Yeah, really nice booth. Ballroom. Yeah. Yeah. E everything in between. I think one of the weirdest ones I saw was an old uh, VW bus thing. What do you call it? Van. The old VW van. Yeah. That had a made, uh, do it yourself made little. Uh, Shelves or something? No, little uh, awning. Oh, yeah. And it come off of the van and, I mean, these were hippies. This would have been back in the 80s. I mean, there was, it looked like it would have been like maybe sometime last year that they'd taken a shower. <laughs> and I don't know what they were selling, but that was set up beside the road. I mean, it's just, yeah. you know, and maybe like Colton said, it, it's been a little while since we'd been. You know, it was almost like firework stands during 4th of July, just times a billion yeah <laughs> i mean they're just yeah, everywhere they, they pretty much take over but. and you can pretty much if it's rock you can probably buy it i mean they were pretty much selling everything from gravel to stuff that should be in the smithsonian yeah um and it didn't and it could vary a lot at one place uh, but uh, i mean there was some incredible stuff that we saw there i, I know there was a few places that you know, we saw geodes that you could have turned into bathtubs. They were so big. No. Um, probably you wouldn't want to get in that. No, it'd be a little on the It'd be a little side. painful. Yeah. It'd be <laughs> like uh, taking a bath on a bed of nails. nails. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, anyway, it's getting fun. a little off track there, but I just, you know, we're, we're not going to have these pieces very long, and I just wanted to, to kind of show, you know, kind of like what we're talking about, you know, where gold is one atom in a billion you know the chances of a customer having this and we see yeah. it is um, not real likely i mean we've seen a little bit i've had chances to buy some and didn't do it and i should have but uh, i just wanted to kind of bring it up this morning and and let you guys look at it yeah pretty pretty crazy i mean that's this is just crazy to think that you know that it, it really puts it into perspective, I guess, the whole time thing, that if gold were a second, you'd have one, one second in 32 years would be gold. One second would be golden in 32 years. Yeah. It's almost 33 years, 32. Well, no, it's almost 32 years. It's 31.68 years. Oh, is it 31.68? Yeah. Okay. So, but still, I mean, the rest of those billion seconds that 999 billion nine million yeah all of that is other material yeah that's just incredible yeah so yeah so that's but, that's all i got i just you know it's one of those things where i think if if you did see this somewhere you probably wouldn't maybe wouldn't appreciate how rare it is yeah uh, probably wonder if it was fake yeah it does you know because it looks like marble yeah a little bit but instead of the veining being black it's gold right and it's actual gold it's not just the color gold yeah you know and you can kind of see a little bit you know or maybe it's it's a little difficult probably on the looking over the camera thing or whatever but you know it does have a little different color than manufactured gold and that's, mm -hmm. and that's because of the alloying Right. Yeah, and a refining process because you're getting all those impurities out of it, whereas this is just coming straight out of the ground and being yeah. polished. Right. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode of Family Jewels. Check us out next week and every week on Tuesday mornings at 1045 right here on Facebook. Um, if you guys have any questions or you have something that you would like shown or you'd like us to talk about, uh, please let us know by sending us a message or, um, Gabe, you're going to have to go back and rewatch it where you were talking about gold in quartz. This stuff. So anyway, if you guys have something that you'd like us to talk about or that, uh, you have questions about, please give us a call 361-991-7565 or message us right here on Facebook. 
You can also check us out, suzannes-jewelers.com. And uh, we look forward to seeing you guys next week. Have a great week this week, and uh, we will talk to you next time. Thank you. Bye.